Okay, the topic is due diligence. Another important topic. Another important topic. Due diligence. If I take this due diligence, uh, it's the different assignment that we are going to discuss. Right. So due diligence can perform in the form of review engagement. Due diligence can be performed in the form of review engagement. Same time, this due diligence can be performed in the form of agreed upon procedures. Right? Both types we can perform. Why due diligence can perform as agreed upon procedure? Because sometimes when we perform due diligence, we are not expecting kind of an assurance. We have some knowledge about the target company. Now, I'll teach you what is due diligence in a while. So if we have some kind of an idea about the target company, 100% we are not, we need to, not uh, required to rely on audit services. So what we can do in, the, in that case, we can ask them to provide the findings and we do the analysis part, right? Sometimes due diligence can be performed in the form of review engagement, which means we completely expect a kind of an assurance from the service provider, right? So what is due diligence basically? What is due diligence? So here we're going to look at the definition and purpose and the considerations, acceptance consideration and the procedures related to due diligence, right? Actually, what is due diligence? Make it very simple. There is a company. I can tell this as company X. I can tell this as company X. There is another company. There is another company. I can tell this is as company Y. This is as a company Y. So this is company X, this is company Y. Now, company Y interested to purchase company X. Company Y interested to acquire company X. So company Y we call investing company. Company X we call target company. Company X we call target company. Company Y we call investing company. Now, company Y, investing company, before doing this investment, right, we call acquisition. Right? Before acquiring company X, before investing in company X, company Y need to analyze about company X. Because when it comes to investment, that is a risky decision. Investment is a risky decision. It is not easy. Sometime when you plan to invest and if that investment went wrong, you plan to invest, but that investment went wrong, it is not successful. Ultimately, the investing company also get affected. Right. The best example, Microsoft and the Nokia. Right. Why we are purchasing another company? Why we are spending a lot of money to purchase or acquire another company? The reason is synergy. The acquisition, the reason is what? Synergy. So parent company, which means investing company, why? Expecting if we purchased or if we acquired company X, obviously, after acquiring X, our synergy works very well. Individually, X is performing and earning a 10 million profit. Individually, Y is earning 100 million profit. So if you take individual aspect, it is 110 million. But company Y now thinking, if we acquired company X, we can end up with 150 million. The balance 40, 110 and 150, the balance, the difference 40, we can say 
that is a synergy benefit that is the reason why company y wants to acquire company x but on the other side for company y the funds are limited resources are limited so when you are using these resources limited resources to acquire company x you need to carefully assess about company x because by looking at the external interior and the external information or publicly available information if you take an investment decision without doing a proper due diligence assignment that investment decision is very risky there is a high chance that you might lose your investment also friend right. therefore now company why facing a problem we are using a limited resources sometime company why also borrow money so the funds available is limited we need to acquire company x which is a synergy is the objective but it is very risky decision it is very risky decision so now company y a point company y a point audit this is audit form this is audit form you all know the audit firm is providing different services one is non assurance service the other one is limited assurance service the other one is reasonable assurance service now company y company y request audit firm to perform due diligence request audit firm to perform due diligence due diligence can be in the form of agreed upon procedure or in the form of limited now the risk is very high right risk is very high therefore the due diligence need to be performed here in the form of limited assurance in the form of limited assurance in the form of limited assurance okay so due diligence perform in the form of limited assurance so company audit firm now search about this company x this assignment is known as due diligence assignment due diligence assignment knowing about the target company then this particular company audit firm that provides due diligence report to company x after that report only x company y which means investing company decide the consideration how much we want to pay and decide whether to proceed with the acquisition or not so simply a due diligence means simply due diligence means the due diligence helps to reduce the risk of making poor investments due diligence helps to reduce the risk of making poor investment decisions so who perform due diligence audit firms in order to enhance the information about the target company this is what general due diligence means okay i'll tell you another situation this is we call customer due diligence this is we call customer due diligence right customer due diligence what is customer due diligence see here this is a company or firm right i'll take the firm's perspective okay now a new organization customer they request i can say client they request firm to accept their engagement now this is a new client 
So accepting new customer as a credit customer is risky. Cash customer, no issues. You can take a customer as a cash customer, even if the normal companies, if you get a uh, normal cash customer, no problem. But audit firm accepting the customer client is a risky decision. So firm need to do a customer due diligence. about the customer customer due diligence right so that enhance kyc know your customer right so that is also there that is also there right but in the here what they mentioned is investment that they mentioned is investment so actually the due diligence reduce the risk of investment due diligence reduce the risk of bad or poor investment the purpose of due diligence why we should uh, conduct uh, due diligence advisor advisor is the firm acquirer acquirer is the investor right target company right so this one advisor this one acquirer this one target company clear so purpose is given due diligence provide more information it's revealed the potential problem before acquisition decision made the potential problems exist before acquisition decision is made and provide the client with the information whether or not to go ahead with the acquisition whether you should continue with the acquisition or not. Whether to go ahead with the acquisition and when to go ahead with the acquisition. What is the exact point, date, at which period we should do this decision, acquisition. How much should pay for the target company? How much should pay for the target company? I'll take this a point here. See, in IFRS 3 business combination revised, IFRS 3 business combination revised, you might study goodwill on acquisition. In SBR, strategic business reporting, you might study. Here, how to calculate goodwill? Consideration paid by parent. Consideration paid by parent. Fair value NCI total by total it up we call that as total consideration. So consideration paid by parent, fair value NCI, total consideration, right? Minus 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 net assets of subsidiary net assets of subsidiary at acquisition date net assets of subsidiary at acquisition date This is equals to goodwill on acquisition. This is equals to goodwill on acquisition. So this is how we calculate the goodwill. Now see, if I take this part, consideration paid by parent, who decide this amount? This is decided by due diligence assignment. How much it worth? How much it worth? So when you do a due diligence, you identified the real worth of the company. Okay. So increase the stakeholder confidence in the acquisition decision. Obviously, when you do a due diligence report, due diligence assignment, the stakeholders, the parties who involved, right, 
of the parties who contributed including shareholders they are really happy about the decisions and their confidence will increase why because investment decision is reduced to acceptable level when an entity is performing due diligence right or oh, due diligence provider will need to look at obviously the advisor the firms they need to look at the current issues affect the company in result additional time and cost to resolve are the issues faced by the company normally when it comes to acquisitions right there are sort of problems faced by the target company sometimes because of those problems sometimes target company won't for uh, sell it off right therefore need to identify these uh, issues that affecting that company right it is very important prospects for the future to ascertain whether the investment is likely to generate the rate of investment return obviously if we invest this much of money with massive amounts normally for these acquisitions right what happen if we invest whether in future it will generate desired rate of return for that investment past performance to establish how successful the company has been and whether it may be continue that success in the future is also important if you looking at only past right sometime the future get affected right might be performed well in the past right but future become worst so you should focus whether it will be continue like in the past is also need to be assessed in the due diligence so the advice or the provider of due diligence look at this matter in detail very 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 important right if i take the due diligence normally actually the investor company or else acquirer need to know about the target company they need to understand about the target company they need to know about the target company right all the pluses and minuses need to be assessed and understand by acquiring company so therefore financial performance and the position about target company how much their revenue what is their profitability what is their assets what is the equity what is the liability financial performance whether they are performing well or not operational matters their operational risk quality expenses systems customer supplier relationship organization culture operations all these matters you need to understand market position what is the positioning in their market whether they are market leader or whether they are follower right what is they are in the life cycle right so you know the company's life cycle whether they are in the initial stage growth stage or maturity stage or declining stage what is the exact position what is the exact position that need to be analyzed the legal matters the regulatory framework legal framework whether there is any legal issues against the company litigation problems against the company or any customers file case against the company for uh, chemical mix or whatever production fault legal issues need to be assessed tax matters whether the company is a genuine company or they violate the tax right all these matters need to be discussed hr matter that is very important because people are organization organization is a group of people how people treated how they recruited what is their productivity right what is their health condition <coughs> how they performed contractual disputes contractual relationships all these matters need to be analyzed by the due diligence provider and these information to be provided to acquiring company all these informations are related to target company and you all know when it comes to due diligence i told you 
Sometime, let's take in this case, the same example, right, what I used to explain about the due diligence, to explain about the due diligence. Here see, company Y is also in the education industry. Company X is also in the education industry. Let's take company Y is a college, university. But company X is an institute which is very well performing for professional qualifications. Now this university want to acquire this company and uh, make that company uh, X as a part of their organization. So they have the target audience so they can promote to follow professional qualification synergy. Right? So if both are in the same industry, no need to pay more for the advisor. No need to pay more for the advisor expecting everything to be get done by them. Simply what we can do is we can ask them to provide the findings about the matter and we can do the work. So simply due diligence, that's why we told due diligence can be a limited assurance, due diligence can be agreed upon procedure, no assurance. Right? Benefits of engaging an advisor to carry out due diligence. Why we should take a firm, third party organization as an advisor rather than uh, ourselves be involved, rather than ourselves be involved in those matters. What are the benefits? Number one, decrease management time spent assessing the acquisition decision. So management need to spend a lot of time to proceed. proceed with this acquisition decision. So many information need to be gathered throughout this acquisition decision. One problem. Identification of operational issues and risk assessment of target company. So it's very well we can identify because most competent and experienced staff who work for these advisor companies. So through that operational issues then risk assessment of target company easily identified. Liability is evaluated and identified. We outsource whatever the liabilities, disclosed and undisclosed liabilities identified. Identify the assets not capitalized. Right. Identify asset not capitalized. See, some internally generated intangibles such as internal brands, contingent uh, liabilities, sorry, internal brands or else uh, the brand name that is developed internally will not be included in the financial statements. Right. As a result of that, uh, once you decided to purchase, they increase the value of the business. So that is assets not capitalized. You need to understand that because they are not recognizing internal brand and all. When at the time of uh, disposal, which means you're going to buy, at that time only they will capitalize. So better to do due diligence to understand these things. Gathering information, I told you, finance, HR, uh, market positioning, legal, operations, finance. All these informations we can gather. Enhance the credibility of investment decision. Obviously, the investment decision credibility enhanced. And you can plan your acquisition properly. And claims made via by the vendor can be substantialized. Right. So normally, when it comes to the claims, when it comes to the claims that is uh, made by the vendor, right? Future uh, time when you the claims made by the vendor can be substantiated. Okay. Evaluation of possible post acquisition synergies, economies of scale and potential future cost. Right. Obviously, if we carry out a due diligence through an advisor, he an analyzes the potential future synergies. What is the economies of scale that we have in future? And potential further cost if you acquire whatever the pluses and the minuses after acquisition that is analyzed by this due uh, diligence advisor firms. So these are the benefits of performing what due diligence. So the due diligence is compared with the external audit. You all know external audit is uh, objective to provide opinion over financial statement. Ensure 
financial statements are free from material misstatement. But if I take the due diligence, due diligence will providing uh, accurate sufficient information to make informed decisions about whether the acquisition or the investment is worth to the company or not. Right. Actually, the scope of the work, if I take an external audit, their cash flow forecast, going concern review at the final stage, past performance, historical financial information. But here, past, current issue and the future prospects, all these things to be considered as a scope. Actually, external audit focused on the financial aspect. But here we focused finance, operations, marketing and legal, tax, HR, all the dimensions to be checked in order to understand that particular client and in order to reduce the investment risk and if i take the level of assurance external audit is reasonable here it is reasonable or limited if you are performing agreed upon procedure it is uh, no assurance if you are providing a review engagement it is limited assurance and at the time of acceptance at the time of acceptance consideration you all know when you are accepting a due diligence, right? Why the company not using their existing form of accountants? Obviously, if the company, let's take one client, uh, audit firm is coming to you and asking you to perform due diligence. Already it is audited by some other organization, another auditor. You should ask why you didn't call them, why you asked to do uh, due diligence. Right. Because we are not your auditors. Why you came to me? That should be discussed first. Whether the target company's employees know about the efficient, that is very important. Sometimes the target company employees do not know about these acquisition decisions. Board of directors may not disclose. Then when you are gathering information, you need to gather in a different way. If you should know whether they realized or not. Right. That information is required to perform due diligence effectively. The third point, whether the acquisition is a hostile takeover. What is hostile takeover? Sometimes the target company do not want to give, do not want to sell. But kind of a pressure put by this market leader, investing company. Somehow they are trying to take it. Then hostile takeover, that effect, you should understand whether hostile takeover or not. If it is a hostile takeover, it's effect the way of taking information, the way of gathering information. Exact scope of the due diligence, that is also need to be considered. Whether the due diligence is performed as limited assurance or whether the due diligence is performed as agreed upon procedure, on what scope we should work, right? Because one is giving assurance, one is no assurance. One needs to findings, one needs to give a opinion, limited opinion. The reason for the acquisition, why you need to acquire? Whether extend the market, whether to do diversified, whether to synergize, right? What is the reason why you interested to acquire that particular company? That logic need to be understood. And the deadline of the report, when you need to finish this and when we need to issue the report, that we need to consider at the acceptance stage. And also ethical threats to be created. What sort of ethical issues may be created, right, after this due diligence? When you perform due diligence, what sort of ethical problems or ethical threats may be created? Those things we need to consider at the acceptance consideration. And these are the due diligence procedures, due diligence procedures. The analytical review of past financial statements to assess the recent financial performance of the target company. Right? Financial performance. Review forecast, including the assessment of reasonableness of the assumptions used to forecast, future forecast. Can be cash flow forecast or whatever, because you need to forecast the future as well. Once it's happened, the due diligence happened, uh, what is the implications, right? That need to be considered. Review the existing contracts to identify when the contracts going to expire. And whether the contract will be affected by the change of form. Already that uh, target company might sign contracts with different suppliers, customers and all. Right. All those contracts, when it's going to be expired, 
if the ownership change whether that contract will valid to continue or whether the contract will be ceased that need to be understood that's why some cases are uh, this uh, particular due diligence they suggest when to be acquired let's say five or six key contracts it's get expired by uh, recently before that they are not advising us to acquire why because after the acquisition only so after the expired only we can realize whether they wish to work with the new organization new ownership or not right review the terms and condition related party transaction definitely you should look at inspection of assets register ledgers to identify possible overstatement of the assets only when someone want to sell the company there is a possibility that may overstate the assets net assets in order to increase the value so you have carefully inspect the asset registers and the ledgers identify whether there is any overstate review accounting policies of the target company how they compare with the acquiring company the results of the target may be recalculated the basis of the acquiring company's policies assess the differences arising from uh, less prudent accounting policies sometimes the accounting policies used by the target company and the accounting policies used by the uh, investing company may not be in uh, con not be consistent so therefore we should recalculate based on the policies used by the uh, investing company right so that is very important consistency is important right because after acquisition you need to follow a consistent accounting policy review board needs to identify significant issues affecting target company which may affect the value obviously board minutes need to be uh, checked identify the issues that affecting the target company's value correspondence between company and the lawyers regarding any legal issues obviously you should get the correspondence related regarding the company the lawyers and uh, you need to ensure whether there is any issues related to legal matters right so that's all relate with the particular due diligence that's all relate with the particular due diligence clear now let's move to the question now let's move to the question there are two questions three questions given here so let's discuss these three questions then you will understand how this due diligence can be tested in your final exams you are audit manager of in pointer and company a firm of chartered certified accountants which offers a range of assurance services you are responsible for the audit of visla company a company which provides approximately 10% of your practice firm's practice income each year 10% you are receiving from that company the finance director of visla company has recently contracted you to contacted you to provide information about another company called setter company which is looking to appoint a provider of assurance services an extract from the email with the finance director of visla has sent you shown below so here visla planning to purchase setter vesla is a investor company setter is a target company pointer is a advisor one of my friends gordon potts is the managing director of setter a small company which is looking to expand in the next few years I know the Gordon has approached the company's bank for finance of six million to fund the exam expansion. To support this loan application, Gordon needs to appoint a firm to provide a limited assurance review on the company's financial statements. He would also want appointed a firm to provide tax and tax authorities. I have asked Gordon to contact you. and i hope that pointer company will able to provide these services to setter for a lower fee if that fee you suggest is high and unacceptable to gordon then i will recommend gordon approach to griffon company 
instead. I would also consider appointing Griffon to provide the audit of Vizla and Company. Griffon and Company is a chartered accountant which has office in the same town as Point. You have done some research both Setter Company and Gordon Potter Potts and have confirmed that the company is small enough to exempt from audit. The company is owner managed with the Potts family 90% of the shares capital. Gordon Potts is a director, majority shares three other companies. An article in a newspaper from several years ago, Gordon Potts indicated that his company is one fine breach of employment law and that he used money from the company's pension plan to set up a business abroad, appointing his son managing director of that business. His integrity is question number. Question number one. Explain the ethical issues and other matters should be considered. Right? Explain the importance of obtaining customer due diligence. Right? I am not going to discuss ethical issues because ethical issues you know how to approach already we discussed. Right? I am going to take the customer due diligence here. Right? So normally when someone is approaching you, this is the customer due diligence. This is not a uh, normal due diligence question. So I will do one customer due diligence then we will look at the normal due diligence as well. So before accepting the customer, the firm need to do a due diligence that I told customer due diligence, right? So now let's do this question. Right? Question number, sorry. Question number one. Customer. due diligence question number one customer due diligence okay <clears throat> the first point customer due diligence customer due diligence also known as know your client K Y C. Customer due diligence is also known as know your client. K Y C. Right? Money laundering procedures. Money laundering risk is one of the key matter all the firms all the firms need to consider need to consider before accepting new clients before accepting new clients. Right? Customer due diligence, I just mark CDD. Customer due diligence refers to the firm obtaining obtaining information to be able to to be able to identify who the prospective client who the prospective client is and verify identity Verify identity by reference to independent and reliable source material. So actually through this customer due diligence, firm can able to identify who is the prospective client is 
that clear identification can be done right through customer due diligence i'll continue firm need to perform crucial risk assessment firm need to perform crucial risk assessment when taking a new client right firm should assess the nature of the prospective client the nature of the prospective client and its source of funds and its source of funds that is also very much important right firm need to confirm the customer due diligence the source the client nature funds understand then thereafter the potential clients directors shareholders their structure ownership and their background need to be checked okay firm need to confirm and identify shareholders including family members who this is a case related one na, collectively own 90% of share capital also need to identify the balance 10 percent of the shareholders so who are the balance 10 percent what is their nature all those sort of things you need to understand right and also there is a thing that we need to understand who is the beneficial owner right who is the beneficial law right i'll tell you what is beneficial law no? firm need to identify any beneficial owner exist beneficial owners are individual behind client who ultimately own or control the client sometimes client powerless someone behind the client who ultimately control right so that we need to understand that we need to assess right and if there is any where the business relationship exists where the business relationship exists where the business relationship exists understand if there is any business relationship exists understand the purpose and intended nature of the relationship of the relation the nature of the relationship is very important on the customer due diligence right and also firm need to perform ongoing monitoring 
over suspicious transactions suspicious transactions so normally if there is any money laundering risk right you always we should uh, monitor the suspicious transactions suspicious transactions that need to be understand right okay so these are the ways of uh, providing customer due diligence customer due diligence clear so i do this i did this question i did this question in order to uh, make you comfortable with the due diligence of customer right so from where you can get the information from where you can get the information we did the importance why customer due diligence is important right from where you can get uh, the information right simply uh, you, this question consists two areas one is importance that's what we discuss now for this where you can get the information about the customer one i'll tell you particular client is a company so incorporation certificate right so the legal status you can verify there right at the same time uh, companies house search right from that you can identify who are the shareholders who are the directors right and the background of the shareholders that is another information right latest financial statements right so that is you can review right so source of the funding for the company what is the source funding company the source can be verified right so those are the ways that you can get the information about the particular cost client due diligence right now let's move to question number two you are the manager in one of the assurance department of l and company a large firm of chartered accountants you currently assigned to a due diligence engagement for one of your firm's audit client cheetah a manufacturer of bespoke furniture the audit of cheetah company is conducted by a team from different department you have never been involved in the audit of this client so your firm is doing but separate team the engagement is to conduct a financial and operational due diligence review of zebra company so zebra company is the target company a company which has identified as a potential acquisition target by cheetah so target company zebra investor company cheetah due to the synergies offered and there has been uh, potential expand existing production facility the reason is what synergy as part of the due diligence as part of the due diligence review you have been asked to provide a valuation of zebra company's assets liabilities analysis of company operating profit forecast this will assist cheetah to determine the appropriate purchase price for zebra consideration during the engagement field work your team identified two matters which require further consideration while reviewing the correspondence with customers while reviewing the correspondence with customers in relation to outstanding receivables one of the team found a letter from a large retailer for which zebra company produces a number of unique products providing advance notice that they are not renewing their purchasing agreement with the current one expires see one contract finished they said they are not going to uh, repeat right the customer advised that they are switching to a new entrant to the market who is substantially cheaper than the customer zebra a brief analysis identified that customer provide an average 5% to zebra's annual revenue the person who is providing 5% of annual revenue now going to shift it to a, another new entrant so it's a market there is a new entrant also and that person is giving very cheap 
Zebra company owns a piece of land which is given to a teat as a gift by a local authority 10 years ago. The land surrounds the entrance to the main production premises and is designated as a nature reserve. Restrictions were imposed on, uh, import, imposed on the usage of the land which also limit who the owner is able to sell the land into the future. The land has zero carrying value in the financial statement. So there is a land that with the zero value because it is a gift and it is given to whom? The target company. There are restrictions over the selling this particular property to another party. No additional matters arisen to your consideration. You also aware that the financial statement for last 10 years have been audited. No modifications have been made to the auditor's opinion during this period. Explain why each matter require further investigation, a part of due diligence. So if you take this question, this question speaks about the performance. Why you need to focus more in these two matters, right? That is the question. So let's do that. Question number two, right? So let's take the termination. Termination of contract. So if I take the termination of contract, right? See, the loss of customer, the loss of customer may lead to a reduction in forecast value by 5% per year. So obviously, it's a 5% income is generated by this customer after the acquisition or the, after the contract expires, he said he not going to continue. So which means your forecast need to be reduced by 5%. Right. This also reduce cost specifically relevant to service custom. On the other hand, you can't simply say that revenue only reduced. No, the cost is also to some extent reduced. So further investigation is needed. Right. So therefore, you need to consider this as a very important thing. Time. This matter is very much important. This matter is very much important because the future cash flow of zebra will be critical in determining the value of the company. So that's what I'm saying it is important, right? And the same thing, and the same thing, uh, one is cash flow problem and the termination. New entrance to the market. New entrance to the market. Right. So, existing customer, existing customer wants to switch with new market entrants due to cheap price. There is a possibility, see, there is a possibility. Other customers also can switch to new market entrant. This 
significantly affect revenue and cost in future time because uh, sometime again i can say there is a possibility new entrants primarily focused target company right normally when they when they enter they are focusing on the target company right so that is also uh, there is a issue clear again in the same termination of the contract possible impairment of the asset is also there impairment of asset this matters need to be considered right as a result of the termination what what can happen that's what i'm telling you one is new entrance there is a threat that affect our cash flows and the revenue sales cash flow definitely customers leave when the customer want to leave we lose the cash flow that affect the cash flow here obviously the impairment of the asset try and see here the loss of major customer the loss of major customer may be an indication may be an indication of impairment of the assets of zebra target company right production assets they need to produce right production assets inventory try may get impaired due to customer contract not renewed the customer contract is not renewed obviously it's affect right and the value rate reduced sometime if zebra keeping specific inventory see specific inventory to that customer there are specific inventory that customer cannot be reuse also possible right for that particular customer if we are keeping an inventory that we can't reuse that we can't reuse that is also indication of what impairment okay understood now let's move to the second one gifted land gifted land so if i take the gifted land right there may be restrictions restriction to sale might happen and zebra may prohibit <laughs> zebra may prohibited from including land as a part of acquisition because uh, zebra cannot include the land as a part of acquisition right that may be a great disadvantage for us right this may result investor company in 
not able to control over the land surrounding production facility surrounding production facility right this will affect the price of negotiation this will affect the price of negotiation obviously right if it is control is not obtained you can't uh, uh, pay more for it right sometime cheetah cannot use the land according to their intended purpose due to limitation on future usage fine that is also possible that is also possible fine so all these matters to be considered this is what you have to write the answer okay i hope you all understood this part right now let's move to the third question here describe the purpose of due diligence compare the scope of due diligence audit of historical financial state okay so the purpose of the due diligence so part b uh, is something else so here you can you can read the question scenario but directly they ask the purpose of due diligence it is theory why we should perform due diligence it is there in the tutor and the scope of due diligence how it differ from the external audit right so if i take the scope of the due diligence and if i take the scope of external audit totally different so that's what given here see this is the scope of due diligence and external audit Right. So you can compare and you can write the answer. Right. So with that due diligence part is done. With that due diligence part is done. I hope you all understood what is due diligence, why due diligence is important, how to perform due diligence and all. Right. Rest of the questions. There are few questions in the revisions we can discuss. Right. Thank you very much. We'll look at uh, the next forensic audit. Forensic audit. Thank you very much.